Hey guys, uh, it's been a while, been really busy, but um, decided to come back after learning a little bit about more geometry nodes and uh, seeing this new extrude node that came, came by. So today I wanted to uh, take the time to do a little overview on it and uh, show you guys how I made this little cool project with just these simple nodes that just creates... Uh, it extrudes basic the geometry itself out into this cool pattern thing and it's based on the proximity so you can control where it's coming from based on uh, just this icosphere or whatever really you want and uh, yeah today i'm going to show you the basics and then to recreate this project so let's uh let's do this first first uh, you, you you are gonna need an experimental branch. This isn't in the of the experimental mode that that people are usually used to downloading. This is a special branch showing that this is still in early development. Uh, I will leave a link below to where you can download it, and uh, if you want to follow along, go ahead. Keep in mind that uh, this branch is is still early and it can crash and other stuff as well can be janky so just be patient with it so first let's start with what is the extrude node so let's open up a geometry panel give a uh, cube here as new and uh, here we have the geometry nodes which you can now just look for search for a uh, node just by clicking off here. So if we go extrude, or what was it? Extrude mesh, there you go. You see we have uh, now extruded our mesh. It's only a one because, well, it's selecting everything. If we go into um, edit mode and say we, let's subdivide this a little bit. And then you see that the, the it's now extruding everything. Uh, but if we select, say, only uh, those faces, go into the text, sign that. I have to remember how to do that. I haven't done that in a while. So here. Geometry nodes, turn that off. And what did we call? We called it groups, the default. So if we pick groups, there you go. It only extrudes the group, the ones we grouped, which uh, was a bit much. But uh, yeah, if we tag this individual one, we only individ we only individually extrude the um, the faces. If we untag it, it's um it's now just uh, all in one. But yeah, make do with that as you wish. And strength, you know, controls the strength. You could add this to whatever you want. Offset just basically moves it based on an XYZ uh, vector location. The selection, you just saw me do that. And here you can see we could extrude edges or we can extrude vertices. And uh, they all have their different uses. For now, let's keep it simple. Next, the top and side. This basically outputs the top here. So like anything in the Z and over here in the X or Y in this case, but nothing like here in the sides that um, that would be considered a side. Uh, and that's what side does. So these basically just tell you the um, the positions you uh, I'll show you a quick example we hop quickly into EV set up a red material and then a or a green material and then a red material whoops go into materials set material that one to red set the other to green then we want only the top to be red and that to be green. and you can see only the top of the extruded parts are red. 
And uh, if we another one, gray, we're actually and I always have to remember how to organize these. So good too. You can see. Only the sides here that are green are what's uh, are the considered the side of the extruded mesh, and only the red parts are what's considered the top of the extruded mesh. Everything else is just you know the default. It could be a different material entirely. Um, but yeah, and uh, that's how that's the basics of it. The what the rest that you can do. Let me, let me show so. Get a vector, make math there. Just set it to multiply, I guess, but a one. You see, and offset this to move around. You could, of course, base this off of other uh, fields and other attributes, maybe another geometry, proximity, blah, blah, blah. So there you go. Not that complicated, uh, as say the Houdini one. You can't out the the back face doesn't exist yet. Um, but you know it's still still useful. If you quickly go inside the mesh, you can see that it is being extruded correctly. If we switch to not individual, you can see everything is just merged into one. So that's easier to see. And uh, yeah, so now let's get to um something a bit more complicated. So let's uh, bring in Sven. Now, Suzanne, I want to give you jump tree nodes. You see, works the same. But actually, let's uh, create something. So let's give Suzanne material to start with a yeah, that works. Just a normal orange diffuse. No, um, no, nothing really complicated. But now let's add a extrude mesh. See, it immediately goes crazy. Lower that down to zero point zero five. Put that to individual, and you get like a little tech thing. That looks kind of cool. Uh, there's no real way to bevel this yet inside of Geometry Node, so if you want to bevel this, you just need to add the actual bevel modifier, which we're going to keep, but we're going to have deactivated for now, uh, just from the viewport. And so now, we want to have that control where it switches from the regular Suzanne to this uh, kind of extruded form. So to do that, we need to it, give it a geometry to all around. We're going to go with an icosphere. Set it up and we're going to switch the vi viewport visibility to wire. So that way we can do it. Go to render view. Here we go. It's scale. Back in Suzanne, we can quickly drag the icosphere in, set it to relative so that it can move around and it'll update. Now the next thing we want to do is um, set a, uh, what was it, proximity. There you go. And set it to faces, so it, it takes in the faces and uh, not the edges or the vertices. Well, you can if you want. And now the first instinct would be, okay, put this into selection. And nothing happens. Why? Because uh, it needs to run through a either a map range or a color ramp. I prefer color ramp. Flip this. And there you can see that it's sort of happening. If we subdivide Suzanne a bit more, see, sort of have this uh, crawl effect where it just it pops up and takes over. Uh, we can smooth, shade smooth, sort of, uh, the um, object here, the, and then go to auto smooth, mess with it there, 
just to get better, but uh, I like flat shading. Now, that's great. But uh, how do, like, what can we, what more can we do with this? Well, what we can do is in materials, if we set the uh, material, set material to this yellow material, and that's that's going to be just base. Now, this, uh, make it this green material, and I want that to be the top. Red material is going to be the sides. You'll see. We now can transform Suzanne into this sort of tech thing. And the ex the strength is still customizable. We can go inside. We can change these to edges. And edges are a bit weirder because they o they're only one side. So... They don't have the 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 other one, uh, and then vertices is just you know vertices. You can do uh, say convert these into uh, curves and then give that a a a little uh, profile, but that's not for this tutorial. Um, this is just going to be a quick one, so there we go. 0 0.005. I like. I tend to like something around that range a little bit. Cool. There you go. And then, of course, you can uh, go into the material itself and change it. So let's actually um, both to the green. Add the green material here so we could edit it a bit. Go to Editor. Editor. Want it to be. Less rough, more metallic. We can do some procedural texturing because remember, geometry nodes at this point does not take uh, UV data. So if we add a musgrave, kind of give it a little bit of a warping feel. Lower it down. There you go. Now we have like a green metallic takeover of Suzanne. And of course, this is entirely procedural, so well, another thing you can do is in this strength, we can make that proceed a, a little bit random too, so we have a random value between uh, 0 0.005 and 0 0.002. Plug that in, and now we have slightly random heights. We could even Exaggerate this a bit by just making it r ridiculous. So there we go. It's all randomized. We can change the speed. In this case, I'm just I'm not gonna make it too too wild. It's just gonna be random extrusions. Now, if we go back into here. Put the uh, old bubble node back on. See that it uh, it can, it gives a little not the bevel node the bevel modifier it gives a little uh, push to it. Of course, uh, can clamp overlap so we can get a little bit more of an effect. A weird effect here and now there you go it lags a little bit because my computer is chugging so let's remove that and there you go that's uh the extrude node there is other applications for it of course there's um many many things you could even use these side things to extrude more things on it make a, another selection so if i wanted to extrude only from the top all that we need to do is uh, create another mesh, put that there, and make the side here the selection, and put that into geometry. And then you'll see I'm extruding it again from the top. Switch this quickly to the side. I'm extruding only from the side. And uh, that gives it another type of effect, kind of like a paper effect. 
video um of course i didn't add any of these materials so maybe I'll probably run it through here run that through there and you'll see it and uh, yeah you could just get creative with it no it's not it, it's still in its early stages so it's not exactly like 100 percent but you could definitely have fun with it for example if i switch this to the offset and start messing with it and uh, maybe make it a bit more extreme you can see i can uh do some weird stuff with it and it'll it'll just start going that way for a minute i can of course get a little bit sharper here and then go and just have fun nope no no need to stress about it uh as a Five. Uh, the other thing that you do need to worry about is if you make it too close, it'll only, it'll start to um only take the very border between the mesh and because remember it's hollow on the inside. So even if I extrude it in, you'll see it's it's hollowed. Uh, let me see if the solidify modifier would actually that. That's if that's a a fix then that could work nope does the same exact thing so you want to mess with this bit in order to make it as uh cover as much coverage as possible and not get those little gap things anyways that's all for this tutorial i uh, hope you're fun this can be implied on any model uh with any you no know, geometry on it so have fun bye